teacher. He is a bad teacher. We are all accountable to Allah and to the community and to the government. None of us is above the law and none of us is untouchable and none of us has wahi from Allah to be given to him or to her and they are not questionable. No, everybody is questionable. Everybody is touchable. Everybody is accountable. Once your organization become able to let the idea be owned by the community, definitely your organization will mature to the level of an institution. An institution is not a name. I call my, I, I, I create an organization yesterday said that an institution of so and so, so what? An institution means ownership of the community to your organization. So you open all the doors of your organization to the community to choose the president, to choose the uh, structure, I mean the, the leadership, even to develop your ideas. What is the role of the institution, which is a mature organization, is to change the idea into ideology. So the fourth or fifth arrow will go to another circle called ideology. You have an idea, initiative, organization, institution, ideology. Clear? Just one slide. This ideology will be owned by the country or by the society or by the tribe or by whatever it is. What does it mean? What ideology you spread? Islam? In Islam, what it is? Communism? What it is? Liberalism? What it is? Secularism? But it took a long time to develop this idea of one man to become an ideology. It might take you 30, 40 years at least. Clear? Is it clear? After that, this ideology will be changed with the community, ownership of your ideology. Uh, be the beginning, 50, 60, 70, 80. You nurtured it and focus on growing it, not focus on the farmer. Focus on growing it after 60 and 70, which awake. Clear, but number six is culture. What, what's, what's circle now with you? Six, what, what is number six called? Huh? Culture. The arrow goes to, after culture, is Nahda, which is Renaissance. It is a cycle. Idea, initiative, organization, institution, ideology, culture, Nahda, Renaissance, civilization, and history. You can make history. I will conclude in about two, three minutes now by saying our problems in our organizations, that we do not question them, that we, whether they talk about Hadith or Quran and whatever it is, that to worship clans, this is our group. That's why we never get our idea to be owned by, we said this is our jama'a, this is our development for you, to you. And I was challenged because I don't have any, everything. There's no need for clapping. I believe in quality of people. How many? Community center. Wait for people to come. Half an hour or so, another woman used to come. Another English. Friends? Yes, brothers. Come here, come here. circle of goal. So, Bazgaz, people. He's asking, what are the ways? Is it painful? Yes. <laughs> this is number one. Number two, patient, patient, patient. Hazrat, Hazrat, Hazrat whom? Hazrat, Hazrat Nuh, alayhi salam, conveyed the message, conveyed the message. Oh, C-U-S. Don't go all over the place. <laughs> Shall I get difficult? To achieve, step by step, slowly and progressively. Don't give big promises Big dreams to the community. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.
Any other question, brothers? Yes, come here. We have the television, we have BBC. We have BBC here, we have, uh, we have CNN, we have ENN, ENN is my channel. And we have INN. Come on. Say your question. Are you, where are you from? Are you Pakistani? Yes, I'm Pakistani. Very good. I'm Pakistani as well. Go on. So, uh, the main thing is that uh, different people have different ideas, but the main thing is they, they're, they're not motivated. I see. Like they think that their idea will not work in the future. So, what will you say about that? How we can motivate people? Like, I'm doing this yeah. for, for different competitions. So, uh, I feel that students are not that much. They have ideas. They have that, like great ideas. But they die with those ideas. They don't implement it. So, what will be the motivation for them? How can we motivate people? The first success of motivation, uh, the first story, the first step of motivation is the success of a simple idea. You have, a, what do you call it, competition. You want 1,000 people to participate. Start with five. Start with three. And go on. Do you have to see the full no, I start with one acre, with half acre. With, it depends on how much ability you have. If you put, as I mentioned to the brother before, higher target, this will demotivate you because you'll not be able to do it. You want to educate all the people, the children, in a village which have got 30 or 40, so we'll dump them. So maybe you start to or a motorbike or something like and on. Motivate yourself, don't put high target. Okay? She says, I can't do. I always tell the sisters, if you marry your husband today, will you have a baby at the, uh, tomorrow? I love you. Huh? No, he's in the class or third class. No, not very good. 83. Brother, your brother or uncle, Maulana Swaib? Your brother? You look like me, huh? The first khutbah is the first. It was about the farm of Africa, Birmingham University. So we raised, we made a bank account. And we went from street to street, from door to door. Now, it, at that time, no. Did anybody know me? In the university, with a colleague. Alhamdulillah, he got his, his doctorate, and I got my doctorate as a token from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there was no, no, you know this? We didn't have a box on the wall. And we used to go every Saturday to the Islamic circle to it and to five pound, ten pound, twenty pound, fifty pound, hundred pound. And the biggest donation came to us was in August 1984 or not. So you have people. Your people might not be highly educated. So they might not accept what you're talking about. So you have to take the people step by step. You have to understand that not everything is happening in certain country and successful will succeed in your country. Because those people are different to your people. Those people have got different culture to your culture. Those people have different organization to your organization. Those people have different leadership to your leadership. You learn from them what suits your society. You learn from them what suits your society. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, we can learn from them as well. What's, what's the problem? I love Nelson Mandela. Huh? Sir, in ke baare mein mein ke kaam jo the, unko New nation, new ham jo hai, chale to kya tarakhi kar sakte hai, aur kis tarah se kaun sa thi kya zada? Okay. What? Nizam kaun sa thi kya zada? Say that among the different leaders, which one is more successful according to your opinion? Which should we follow? According with who one, which one of these? No, I I'll tell you something. Suitable for our circumstances. Yeah, I'll tell you something. You see, you judge leaders after they die. Of this nation, it was actually. That the war machine was killing and raping the, the, the Bosnian people of what you have done. I respect theologians like and revolutionary like what you call it, uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, which is actually starts the revolution uh, to, for the rights, the civil liberty of the black people in America. He's not a Muslim, but we respect him. Okay? 
the same like uh, Malcolm X. Okay? And all those, uh, Chijifara, you know Chijifara? And all those people have to learn from them. We have to respect them because in their life they dedicated, that's what I told earlier on, no matter how, ba- how good or bad your idea, if you are committed and dedicated and believe in it. Management of the Islamic relief and the whole charity. What, what is the perspective for Pakistan and, of course, the rest of the world? Oh my God, this is another lecture. <laughs> uh, the mission is behind the Islamic relief is when you focus on the needy. Don't focus on how big the organization is, how many offices. When we started in 1984, we were looking, you see, as I mentioned this morning or sometime, my dream was in the good old days to work in Pakistan, because it's Pakistan, in an area called Northwest Frontier, not KPK, in an area called Pakistan. I never been to Pakistan before 1997. But I, with my colleagues, wanted to go to Northwest Frontier, Kashmir, Sindh, and Pakistan, especially Pakistan, uh, uh, Northwest Frontier, and Kashmir. This three. Okay, that was the vision. Alhamdulillah, nowadays they were working, Islamic Relief is working in these uh, four or five provinces. Okay? This number one. You focus, you keep, you keep meeting the poor people, which give you the energy. Okay. And give you the fuel to carry on. Okay? If you don't mix with them and put yourself inside a room, you will be a desk sitting on a desk. A screen, so looking at a screen. The more you visit people, that's why, that's why the Prophet ﷺ, what, 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 uh, when, when Hazrat Jibreel came and told him, you know what he told him? Do you want to be a, a king, a prophet king or king prophet? Or you mean be a slave prophet? He said, Prophet uh, Hazrat Jibreel told him, advise him to become a slave prophet. And to, uh, he was making a dua, saying, Oh Allah, make me among the miskeen. Make me among the miskeen. You could become the king of the kings, isn't it? Yes. But he refused because he wanted to respond to the needs of the most needy. When you respond, this will go electric. Yes, of course. When it becomes electric, you give me a shock. Yes, of course. Of course. Thank you. Any not the king, not the president will, 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 will electrify you. It is the poor people in the, in the city. Okay, thank you. If no further question, I thank the speaker.